to an untrained eye, you see a rainforest. But someone who has a little bit of information of what was going on there, you can see the effects of humans all over the place. The Maya lived here for over 1,500 years, sustaining densities that were higher at some point than what we have today. Even when you see the forest that's somewhat pristine, it shows the Maya hand right there. The word for bat in Maya is zots. And zots permeates the whole Maya universe. My name is Rodrigo Medellin, and I'm a professor at the University of Mexico in the Institute of Ecology. Bats live in pretty much every ecosystem in the world. They're incredibly diverse. Every bat does a different kind of job. And you can see that just by looking at their faces and their structure of the wings and the structure of the whole body. Forty-six years ago was when I first had a bat in my hand. For many years, I've been documenting the ecosystem services provided by bats all over Mexico. But in the back of my mind, I had always had this dream of working with two of the most spectacular species of bats in the world. These bats are very rare. They're the biggest in this continent. They're the apex predators. They are the jaguars of the bat world. All we know, really, was studied in the 60s. Compared to many other species of bats that we know about, they're absolutely unknown, full of mysteries. Finding roosts is a major, major conundrum for anybody working on bats. The researchers were able to find a couple of fantastic roosts of false vampire bats, which provides an awesome opportunity to get some of the first pictures of these species in their natural habitat. My name is Anand Varma. I'm a photographer for National Geographic magazine. The greater false vampire bat roosts in these trees in a cavity inside a hollow tree. It's the first known roost of the species in the country. So I climbed this tree and I put a camera trap. And so that's going to photograph the bats as they leave their roost every night. It's a little soggy. When I first got here, I thought, wow, this is this is gonna be easy. This is Straightforward, there's a tree, the bats live in it, it's not that far off the ground. Got some pictures. Um, didn't quite nail it, they're never quite in the right spot. But the trigger's working, there's a bunch of bats leaving. I thought, done, you know, we're gonna get some amazing images. Like many things, <laughs> this project has uh, hit some snags. And I found out three days into working on this tree that I'm allergic to it. I ended up in the emergency room with an infected rash. It's like, okay, first of all, I'm gonna need to be a little bit more careful with that. <laughs> what are you gonna do? The camera's already up there, so. So luck, no bats. No bats? They're not there? No bats. I guess we can try and see if we can find them there. Yeah, I guess they must be switching back and forth and that's one of the big mysteries about these things. We don't know how reliably they're, they're using a particular roost. And that's why we want to uh, put some radios on them to follow them around. But we know that there's this other roost, at least, 
at least a second roost. So uh, we have to find out. This is one of the least known uh, Mayan archaeological sites. Uh, it turns out that it's got a, a couple of rooms in there. And we found a colony of a bat that is really rare. It is threatened under the Mexican legislation and it's one of the first species to disappear once you disturb the rainforest. Wow. I've only been a handful of times inside a Wally Falls vampire roost. They're really powerful animals. Carnivorous bats. Wow. 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 Seeing those bats happening into them is an incredible experience. Very little has been done to study these bats, either in captivity or in the wild. And so we're just getting started at trying to see what we can do to document these animals and what we can do to understand these animals. What I was really excited about with this project is the prospect of being able to lend my expertise in photography to help the research that Rodrigo is doing here in Mexico. I brought a number of infrared cameras and triggers, and that's gonna help us photograph them in the wild, in their natural habitat, without disturbing them, as well as trying to capture some of their behavior and some of their movement. The species is incredible. It's, they live in these family groups, and so it's really cool to be able to come here and try to help understand the basic biology of these creatures that are incredibly charismatic and we just don't know very much about them. And bats tend to get kind of a bad reputation. There's these kind of almost mythical creatures that you can hear as they whoosh by you at night, but you can rarely see them. What I want to do with my photography is do justice to these mysterious creatures of the night. This is why I'm a photographer be able to come to a new place in the world, see an incredible species in its natural environment, even though it's secreting this you know, toxic resin. To be able to climb this thing and then to be able to review pictures and see how they're moving through that the night, I mean, that's just, piece that's of cool. The tip of a wing is coming out like that. That seems, that one seems to have taken off above, further above mm -hmm. than the others. Yeah. It just feels like the cutting edge of this exploration of the species, of the natural history, and be able to contribute something to the research of these animals, that's an incredibly rewarding aspect wow. of this work. They're all grooming. They spent a long time. That would be an amazing picture. All, they're all heads in different angles, <laughs> wings yeah, in different exactly, angles. Yeah. This is the best time to be studying these bats. We have the technology. We have the people. We have the population. To me, studying these two bats is a keystone to understanding the whole bat universe in the Maya world.